Hello everyone and welcome to Slice Print Roleplay. Alright, so as far as filament storage goes, when I pop out this uh, gold silk PLA from TTYT 3D, I want to make sure that this is going to print just the same way it did before I put it into storage. This stuff prints great, I really like the color of it, it's got good adhesion, and I'm planning on printing, naturally, a gold dragon with it, of course. Unfortunately, before you guys get excited, they don't currently have this color available on Amazon. They do have a kick-ass bronze color that would work really well for a bronze dragon, hint, hint. but it's up to you guys what you use it for, clearly. But I'll have that down in the description down below. Apologize that I can't find this stuff, but that stuff's really cool too, so jump on that. But that being said, that gold dragon is going to be a big job, and I'm probably going to have all kinds of frustrations with it anyway. The last thing I want to deal with is frustrations from not storing this correctly. And yeah, I do have a dry box, and yeah, it works fine, but I wanted to see if there were other options out there. So here's two other storage options that maybe are going to work a little bit better, or at least the same as dry boxes, while being cheaper and a little easier to use. Option number one is going to be a vacuum storage bag. Now, I think this is going to be my clear choice, but we'll see at the end of this. Um, obviously, when you get this from the manufacturer, it's going to be vacuum sealed with this desk and pack it inside, or one like this at least. And I want to make sure that I recreate those conditions pretty much exactly whenever I go to store it again. So I'm going to be putting them back in the same, roughly the same storage conditions that I got it from originally from the manufacturer. In my mind, like I said, that's going to be the better option. Yes, it's going to take a couple extra minutes. You got to grab the vacuum, or if you use the ones that I have linked down in the description below, they come with a, a little hand pump, which is even easier. So it's up to you guys what you want to do. But like I said, if I'm going to store my filament and I'm going to spend 15 to 30 bucks on this stuff, I want to make sure that I'm storing it well. So yeah, obviously that seals it up really well. That's going to get probably 90% of the air or more out of this thing. Whatever moisture is left within the air that's still trapped in here is going to be easily taken up by that desk and packet. So this is going to be a really great storage option. And this is probably what I'm going to use, honestly, just because, like I said, I would prefer going with something that I feel really confident with. Yeah, it takes a couple of extra minutes, but you're spending between $15 and $30 on this filament, depending on what you're getting. So spend a couple of extra minutes to make sure it's going to print well when you take it back out again and you want to use it again in, you know, two weeks, three weeks, two months, whatever it's going to be. So that's my opinion. Obviously, you guys can formulate your own opinions because you're your own people, I assume. Option number two, just going to be a simple Ziploc bag, or in this case, a great value bag, because I got it from my local grocery store and this is the brand they carry. Whoa! Yeah, it's a Ziploc bag with filament in it. So yeah, to be completely honest with you, the difference between this and the vacuum seal bag are probably going to be negligible as far as the amount of moisture that's in there. One silicon packet is probably still fine, but if you're printing enough that you have a couple of extra, throw them in there for good measure. But like I said, between these two, I'm probably going to go with the vacuum seal bag just because I want that extra peace of mind. But you guys do you. If you want to keep using your, um, your dry boxes or if you want to use the vacuum seal, if you want to use the Ziploc bags, Go for it. Let me know how it works out in the comments below. Or if you want to, jump onto the Facebook page and let me know there how it's working for you. Or just post what you're working on, because I'm always happy to see new posts from different people about uh, what you're working on, what printers you're using, or what models you're working with. I'm always happy to see that, and uh, you'll hopefully get to meet some cool people there as well and, and see what they're working on. One quick note about this, if you're going to use the Ziploc method, uh, proper Ziploc etiquette is that you try to squeeze as much air out of this as possible, therefore reducing the amount of moisture in the bag. Obviously, you probably already knew that because you guys aren't heathens. You know proper etiquette. But, you know, I just wanted to throw it out just in case. So, yeah, there you go. Two different options for alternatives to dry box storage that I think are going to be a little bit more efficient and maybe a little easier to use. One other note I want to make. Make sure that when you store this, you're storing it in a place that's out of sunlight. Because, yeah, you've mostly kept this away from, or you've mostly gotten rid of the issue with um, moisture. But sunlight will also have a adverse effect on filament, albeit much slower. But still, you want to keep it safe. So, yeah, keep it secret, keep it safe. Till next time.